ever want to convert your garage into a fish room? Oh yeah. The most beautiful girl. We're actually gonna use this by MD. 61.98. Baby, tell me all you're lonely. Pest block. Aloha, my ohana. It is your boy back in it to win it. Now, if you're new to the channel, let me be the first to give you a nice big warm aloha and welcome. On this channel, we talk about everything aquatics, whether it be freshwater or saltwater, goldfish and koi ponds, fish rescues and local fish door tours, DIY projects, and product reviews in the hobby. All right, my ohana, you already know what I'm gonna say, right? I am super excited for this video because you guys were the one who called this shot. Yeah, I actually posted something on my community tab on YouTube, which stated about four different types of videos that I had locked and loaded. And I was wondering and asked you guys which one you guys wanted to see. And by popular demand, you guys voted for Tiki Lounge, my fish room. If you guys ever wanna convert your garage into a fish room, follow this video. I'm telling you guys, I'm gonna actually make a complete playlist on Tiki Lounge. That way you guys can um, convert your garage or room into a fish room. Let's jump into this one. I'm super excited, let's go. Okay, we gotta get out of that wind. It's pretty windy today. Uh, but before we jump in, before we get started, I gotta give a huge shout out to Majestic Kings. He's a new subscriber, so I just wanted to give you a shout out. Uh, he said he's been watching my videos all week. He said binge watching, so I really appreciate that. He finds it funny, educational, entertaining, and he really appreciates the content. So big props to you, Majestic Kings. I just wanted to give you a nice aloha shout out. And for those of you guys that are new to the channel, this is the perfect opportunity to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And next to that subscribe button, don't forget, hit that bell, click it, turn it on. It's a notification bell. It's going to notify you when I upload a new video and that is it and it's absolutely free it doesn't cost you a thing so with all that being said all right so let's just start from the beginning ohana when converting your garage into a fish room it takes a lot of work especially when your garage looks like this check out this footage this footage was probably done about two years ago as you can see my garage is just full of every and anything you can think of from aquariums to uh shoes to shelves to racks to hiking gear totes boxes you name it it is in the garage so what i did was we got a shed in the backyard i moved everything well not everything but majority of everything into that shed because we are converting the garage not only into a room but a fish room which i'm going to call tiki lounge now after i moved everything out of the garage into the shed in the backyard i still had all of that shelving on the wall so what i did was remove it all right i'm going to show you a picture of what it looks like okay you see all that empty shelving really good shelving i actually sold it on facebook for a steal uh, i sold it for 100 bucks it was like 90 feet of shelving somebody came by scooped it up and guess what that 100 bucks is going right back into tiki lounge i'm actually going to flip the camera around and show you exactly what that wall looks like now as you can see all that shelving is gonzo so what we did is we started to put up some wayne's coating on the wall so this is going to be all the way down to the far end there okay and what we're going to do next is insulate the garage door which is pretty inexpensive not too expensive i'll show you what i got and i'm going to show you how i do it no big tools involved really simple to install i think i hope so without further ado let me show you what i got all right so here is the garage door insulation kit pretty easy to put on all you need is like a blade i suggest getting a long blade and you can see it just goes in the panels of your garage door it's a foam and that's where i plan on putting it right in between each one of those as i close the garage door we can see we have one two three four rows of four so 16 panels total i hope i have enough in this kit to cut 16 panels worth and how i'm going to cut it is with this right here yep this is a blade it actually extends really long so you want to get a really long blade so you can cut straight through the entire foam all right so we actually managed to get only half of the garage done i wasn't sure how much i needed so if you guys were curious one of those bags can actually fit a single car garage this is a double car garage so i gotta go back to lowe's and get some more insulation garage paneling so we gotta get one more okay and i think it was like i'm gonna say it was like 62 dollars okay so right there 62 dollars times two you know you're looking at 125 130 dollars 
depending on your taxes, all right? So let's get back over to Lowe's. Let's go buy another bag. I'll show you exactly where I got it and how much it is. Come back here and uh, yeah, get it done. We're here in the insulation section at Lowe's. Yeah, I know it's Lowe's, it's not Home Depot. Uh, this is actually where I'm getting the garage insulation panels. Here it is right here. There it is. Insulfoam. So we gotta come back and get another one. And just so you know the price, $61.98. That's the price, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this bad boy, load it up, and uh, finish the garage. So I didn't do this on the first time I cut them. I just wanna show you, I just get a measuring tape. We're gonna mark it with a Sharpie. And then um, I got a piece of wood that we can make a really straight line with. And then we just, Cut it with the blade, all right? Super simple to do. Like I was saying, we just made our marker. I got this piece of wood here that goes pretty much the length of the board. And we're just gonna line up uh, right there, make sure it's level all the way across. And then we're just gonna draw our line right across this and then cut it off. This is the type of blade that you want. You want the one that is a real long blade so it shoots out and it goes all the way through when you're cutting it, you know? So we're gonna go ahead. Right at the line, line it up and cut. Also, when you cut this, guys, make sure you cut the plastic facing up. That way, when you make the cut, the first cut you make is going through the plastic. And if you were to cut it this way and cut down, you might not be getting the plastic at the end, you know? It just reassures that you get this plastic coating part first. And the reason why they have this plastic coating on it, it's so that you can bend it and flex it a little bit. It won't crack on you, you know? Um, especially when you're placing it in the panels, all right? Just to give you a heads up. That's why they have it, uh, this plastic piece on here. So it's pretty smart and brilliant the way they did this. So now that we uh, have this cut to fit the size, we're just gonna use this as our template and cut the rest. Boom and voila, Ohana, just like that, we have the entire garage door insulated, huh? Look at that, baby steps, guys, baby steps. Yep, super easy to put together. Like I said, it was like, what, $61 each. This is a two car garage, so we needed two of uh, packages of the uh, garage insulation. Anyways, it's coming together. All right, Ohana, so basically what I'm doing is closing the garage door. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna be doing next. Now, as you can see on the bottom there of the garage, pretty tight seal, right? Yep, all the way down. I'm basically gonna turn these lights off so you can see what I mean, especially when it comes to the door here. I kind of turned the lights off. It's a little bit of light in here, but uh, you can actually see what I mean by the door. Obviously, under the door, basically, that's huge. And then you see along the whole door there, you can see the sunlight coming through. That's what we gotta try to eliminate to try to keep the, keep the garage temperature controlled. All the way at the top, and I have a bad angle, but all the way down the side of the door there too as well. All that light coming through. We're gonna basically eliminate that to help keep the garage insulated. So let me show you uh, the items that I got to do this, and maybe you guys can do this to your door too as well. Pretty simple, inexpensive too. So for starters, check it out, it kills bugs. I don't know if the name brand is MD, but it's an underdoor seal. I don't know if the name brand is Denai or Denny, whatever that is. Uh, the color is kind of a dark mocha brown. I was just like, eh, whatever. They didn't have black or white. So non-toxic, child and pet safe kills bugs for life of vinyl seal and then right here it says easy install you just slide it on you don't need to drill holes or anything right no drilling no screws vinyl with vinyl fins adjust to seal which is really cool it shows you the gap it fits an inch and three quarter door compression fit holds firmly in place that's all you need pretty simple so just wanted to show you guys exactly what i got this is it right here so you know pretty cool just grips to the door. Um, I cut it with a hacksaw, so I got my hacksaw right here. Pretty simple, cut it, it, it kinda hung out about maybe three inches, so I just cut that piece off, pretty clean cut. And then we're just gonna slide it on to the door. All right, Ohana, now that I'm here on the ground, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up this little vinyl sleeve and kinda put it on and get it to the right height that I want because it's pretty much gonna grip the ground. So I'll go ahead and pull it down just a little bit and then we're just gonna slide it on, look at that. Keeping it, keeping it somewhat low, 
because I want it low to the ground. I don't want it high because we want that gap filled. I'm actually just pushing it with my hand and you'll see it come into frame here in a second. Um, let me show you here on the ground how I have it when I mean low as possible. You can see it right down there. It's like almost dragging. If not, it is dragging on the ground. That's what I wanted, just like that. Here we go, rubber mallet time. And just tap it in, just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. We're gonna get this bad boy to slide all the way down the door. Make sure you use a rubber mallet, all right? Don't use a hammer because a hammer could maybe crack or break, break it. So we're just gonna keep hammering it in until we get it all the way down. As you can see, we're getting down to the edge here and we just wanna hit it square. Make sure this bad boy has a nice snug fit to, uh... oh yeah. I like that. I like that, Genie. I like that, Genie. Boom, just like that. Look at that. We have a nice tight seal under the door. I'll get down on the ground door level. No light coming in whatsoever. And now the next step is we're going to weather strip the door. As you can see, the light coming in like we talked about. We're gonna go ahead and fix that, and I'm gonna show you what I got for that. For the door, we're actually gonna use this by MD, same name brand, sponge window seal. I got all of this stuff at Lowe's, if you guys want to know. Five year guarantee, basically it says for windows, obviously we're gonna use it for the door frame, and I'll show you, uh, it's medium resistance to wear and tear, highly water resistant, okay? So, you know, basically you can read that. Um, I got size small. And you can see there was a good, better, and best. I got the better. It comes in a roll like this. This might cover the whole door and probably have extra. I bought two just in case. Uh, it's got a double-sided sticky tape. So basically, we're going to stick this to the door jam. So let me show you. So I'm going to open this door here. You see the door jam right here? We're going to run it all the way down, all the way down this side too as well. And you can see the width of it. It might hang over a little bit, but it's okay. I'd rather it hang over and have the door just wedge it in there. You know what I mean? So the double-sided tape, like so, we'll just peel this off. And then um, we'll just go ahead and stick this and run it all the way down. It's gonna be a real easy fix. So actually we'll start with the top first. Yeah, we'll overlap, we'll overlap the top, get it in the corner, and then we'll come down this way. Check it out. And just like that, guys, it is sealed all the way down. And now we're gonna run it from here all the way down the door jam. Push it up against there and just run it down against the door jam. And we're gonna go all the way down. Super simple to do. So you guys have an idea what it looks like on this side. You see it's a little bit of a, a hangover. We're gonna go ahead and complete this all the way down to the bottom there. And um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Boom, Ohana, just like that. We have the stripping all the way down to the bottom. And yeah, it is jammed in that door, that's for sure. Um, all the way up, all the way across, all the way down. I did get it, uh, my blade and I trimmed it so it wasn't hanging over so much. I left the top hanging over, you can see right here. Um, but as far as, you know, the sides all the way down here, I definitely uh, gave that a nice cut off too. Uh, just to clean it up a little bit and it helps the door close um, a little bit easier now when you do close the door and you put this weather stripping on it's gonna be a little bit tight uh, just because until this like foam starts to work in and compress uh, yeah it'll fit like a really tight tight snug so I'd rather have that tight snug than air leaking through and or you know bugs leaking through so Anyways, we're gonna give this door a little closey close and I'm gonna show you like all the gaps on what it looks like now compared to what it did. We are closing the door and we're gonna see if we can see any light coming out of that door. And damn it, we cannot. Actually, there's a little bit right there, uh, but we can get a bottom uh, to the doorway there just to make it a lot more tighter, um, but not bad, huh? Look at that. Definitely look up, up the cracks there. No light coming in, zero, nada. And that's what I wanted, especially for the door. You know what I mean? Nothing's coming in underneath here. I might put down here at the bottom, it's like a threshold, you know what I mean? So it keeps that 
uh, seal under the door. A little bit more snug, a little bit more tight, but yeah, we got this door done. I'm excited. Now, if you guys wanna know uh, what I did here to the wall, you know how most garages have the little ventilation. I actually took the leftover foam right here from the garage. So I had a bunch of leftover foam and I cut them to size with my blade. This is the blade I've been using, just so you guys know, to cut everything. Um, and we actually jammed in, not jammed, customized three pieces of foam. So there's three pieces of foam stacked on, th on top of each other there and another three stacked on top of each other there. So we're insulating this whole freaking wall. Um, I'm gonna give it a nice coat of paint too as well. So we just got done patching up all the holes and uh, yeah, we're good to go. Since I got the garage door closed, we can see that light coming in right there. And this is where it's coming in from. So you can see this is where critters can come in, right? So basically I'm gonna foam all, all the way up the side, all the way up, all on top of the garage too as well. And we're gonna go all the way, to, even though the top of the garage doesn't look bad, I'm still gonna seal it just to give it a little extra protection, but we're definitely gonna seal all the way down here. And on the other side, let me go to the other side of the garage and show you. This is the other side of the garage. You can see the light clearly coming through. And obviously, yeah, we can't have that. Look at that. <clears throat> you can see I kind of foamed it down there at the bottom. Uh, that's when we first moved in, but I'm gonna refoam it. We're gonna refoam all this. So all of this light coming through uh, will be no longer there. Yep, we're gonna foam that up. Let me show you what I'm gonna use. So you guys probably seen the Great Stuff brand. Um, I'm, re I'm gonna actually use this. This is a pest block. And you know me, it's about pest, right? So we're gonna stop this from, you know, spiders, ants, and or roaches getting in. We'll use this trigger here. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna cut it and use the small tip because there's some small cracks. I just wanna get a nice custom spray. This stuff will expand pretty wide, so you don't wanna use too much, just enough in the crack. Blocks out unwanted pests and bugs. That's what I want because guess who's gonna be in here majority of the time? This guy, okay? So we wanna make sure there's no bugs uh inside we'll try to limit as much as we can because this is gonna be an actual room you know what i mean and i can picture myself probably sleeping in here too every now and then this will be kind of like the doghouse but a kind of cool doghouse you know what i mean it's sealed tight it's a little snug to get the door closed but it's okay uh it, it'll it'll loosen up after a while it'll break down that foam will slowly start to just make it easier for us to close the door so let's foam up the garage and i'll show you what it looks like all right after it's done so check it out. I'm climbing up the ladder here. I wanted to show you guys the very top of the garage here, all the way down. You can actually see right there. You see it? See those gaps? I'm kind of showing you guys an angle. Um, that's outside. You can see it. See them? Uh, right there. There you go. Keep it steady. You guys can see that's outside. That's where critters can get in. So I'm basically going to shoot um, that foam right inside that crack to seal it up so no critters can get in the garage. All right, just wanted to show you guys, if you guys wanted to do this too, take the precautions and shoot the top of the garage. As you can see, this is the garage part right here. So this is the part that's gonna move and go up. And then this is a wood base. So as long as you shoot it in the crack, it should be perfect. You don't have to worry about it hitting the garage door and like messing the foam up or anything. So just thought I'd give you guys a heads up what we're gonna do and I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm all done. So I'm basically just foaming up the sides. I'm just running it right down the line here as you can see. Pretty simple to do. It expands so you don't really need much. Um, this will expand right into the gap. But as you can see, look at all the way down. See those little spots there where you can actually see the light coming through? Uh, that foam will actually foam up and pretty much cover it up so I'm not worried about that so you can see the light we're gonna let this expand and um, we'll come back to it and see how it looks this part should be pretty easy we're just gonna run a bead of foam all the way down in this crack pretty easy see that oh yeah oh yeah and just like that we have it foamed all the way down. Now on this side over here, remember, there was some light shining in over here. Well, there is some light. It's not totally airproof, but you can see we pretty much 
got it all in. I'm okay with it. You know, you can't make it totally air tight or air proof. I was trying to make it insect proof. Probably won't happen when you got a garage unless I don't want to use my garage and I totally just make this a wall or something, which isn't going to happen. But you can kind of see there's a little bit of light coming through, but you know, hey, what are you going to do, right? So anyways, just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. If you are going to plan on foaming in your garage door, um, as you can see, this little slit right there, it will stick to your garage door and will keep it from opening. So what you need to do is just get like a blade, slide that blade in there and just go right down the line. It kind of breaks the seal from it sticking uh, to your garage door. So that's what I pretty much did. And uh, yeah, that way the garage door can open and whatnot. So as I open the garage door here, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. So, you know, it's pretty much going all the way up, all the way down. And when the garage door closes, you can actually hear it kind of sliding across this, which I don't know, it's comfort comforting to me because it feels like it's going to be like a nice seal as it's rubbing up against this um, foam. But I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like as far as the garage door goes um, with the garage door open. Your boy went foam happy. As you can see, I foamed up all the way down that, you know, border there of the concrete and the wall. I really don't want anything getting in here, even down over here and pretty much foam that all in. I'm gonna put some baseboard um, over that just to cover it up, so to make it look somewhat decent. Okay, now that we're pretty much done foaming in the entire garage, I need a break. I know you guys need a break. And by taking a break, I'm gonna show you guys some aquarium fish. Starting with the aquarium that's here in the garage, or should I say Tiki Lounge, I'm gonna show you guys my beautiful fader flower horn Moana and her roommate Tupac, my Jack Dempsey cichlid. And then we'll go in the house and I wanna show you guys or give you guys an update on the rainbow cichlids on how they're doing in their new home. Wait till you see those beautiful cichlids. Let's go see Moana and Tupac. Here she is, the most beautiful girl in the world. Look at Moana, my beautiful fader flower horn. Yes, she is a female, and I know she has a big nuchal bump or natural hump or whatever you want to call it. Coke, cock on her forehead. She is absolutely gorgeous. Next to her is Tupac. Baby, tell me oh, you're lonely. Look at him, huh? Beautiful Jack Dempsey cichlid. Love this guy. The comeback kid, we call him. Um, but yeah, they're doing excellent hey guys i'm thinking about entering her into a flower horn competition tell me what you think down in the comments okay i think she's so unique i don't know if she'll win but i think it would be fun and a cool little experience to maybe um vlog that whole like you know competition type vibe for flower horns um for a female look at her head normally females don't have such a big cock or coke on their head like that i think she's super unique i don't know if that would help her causes but i love her coloration um, I love her finish. Look how long those trailers are. And I think she's, um, I don't know, I think she's competition ready, guys. Tell me what you think, all right? Um, other than that, let's go inside the house and check out the rainbow cichlids. See you later, girl. So here we are, as you can see, everybody in here. The Geos are doing great. Uh, look at the Tiger Oscar and look at these three beautiful rainbow cichlids look at them huh the colors the yellow the beautiful orange red eyes these guys are amazing i got these guys from nolan's aquarium shout out to nolan's aquarium again and again this isn't going to be their forever home here um, but they're all doing great though but if you guys are interested in a beautiful colorful cichlid and they also don't get very big a little bit on the smaller side as far as cichlids go um but i love their color their pattern beautiful they almost look like bumblebee cichlids in a way um but yeah just a gorgeous looking cichlid huh the rainbow cichlid guys don't forget rainbow cichlid and go check out my boy nolan's aquarium he ships anywhere in the u.s guys anywhere in the u.s i hope you guys enjoyed that little fish break you know i figured i'd throw you guys a bone throw me a freaking bone here i hope you guys enjoyed i guess you can say the steps or the stages of tiki lounge the new fish room here in the garage we took the initiative and we actually got in here we did all of the foam work down in the cracks and the crevices here we got the door jam down there we actually sealed it all the way around the frame we're making it as temperature controlled and insulate it as possible. And of course, we can't forget the garage door right up there. 
<laughs> the panels that we installed, super simple, relatively cheap. You know, it wasn't an expensive uh, upgrade, um, but you know, it gives you guys some ideas if you guys wanted to do something like this. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys on the next video. Enjoy your day, enjoy your week. Aloha. Oh.